Police reforms, especially strengthening community policing, topped the agenda of the Lagos Citizens Town Hall engagement organized by the Federal Minister of Police Affairs. Arise News correspondent Oba Adeoye sent in this report. Officers and men of the Nigerian police turned out in their number to take part in the town hall engagement, which featured discussions about how to strengthen the police organization, particularly the entrenchment of community policing across the nation. Minister of State for Police Affairs, Iman Suleiman Ibrahim, laid a foundation for discussions at the town hall meeting with a presentation on the challenges confronting the Nigerian police and how to address them for lasting solutions. Nigeria's total population will double from 200 million to more than 400 million by 2050. According to estimates, we need to quickly strengthen police to be prepared to govern and, uh, you know, safeguard lives and properties. With appropriate resourcing, efficiency in spending, enhanced capacity of officers, and the right technology, robust policies and SOPs, tackling internal security challenges can be more effective. We'd like to strengthen policy, uh, the community policing component and build public trust so that you know, everyone is recognized the fact that they are all police officers, either as informant or as, um, or as enforcers. I would like to brand and rebuild confidence. What are our funding requirements? In accordance to research and the gaps, and based on preliminary high-level estimates, Nigeria would need to invest about 3.4 trillion annually over the next five years to bridge policing gaps. A series of alleged cases of police brutality, bribery, corruption, abuse of office, and conduct on becoming of police of officers of the law. The relationship of the police with the community is strained, but not irreparable. As a matter of fact, the relationship must be established and promoted because employment for, right, they might not be as structured. They are working with very little to achieve very much. Host Governor Babajide Sonwolo shared insight into the success story of the state model of community policing through the Lagos Neighborhood Safety Corps. He emphasized the need for data sourcing and application of modern technology for police reforms to take root. Nothing stops, you know, you ensuring that every police officer have a smartphone of their own. And I think it's a responsibility that the Nigerian police needs to take for forward. You know, you need to be able to equip your men, every single one of them, because a smartphone in itself is an instrument that they can use, not just any phone. A smartphone that can record, a smartphone that can create data and a source of intelligence, you know, for them. Let them also be equipped enough so that as people also are recording or are doing things, they also have the capacity and the capability to also be able to incident issues and be able to reflect and pay it back, you know, play it back and be able to analyze, you know, even as a learning tool for them, analyze and see what comes out of it. You saw my GM um, neighborhood watch with, with, with a camera. It's not just for fashion. Those are some of the things that are important as a starter. The implementation of the community policy model as internal security strategy of the country as approved by the federal government is being sustained. However, following a review of the implementation process so far, it has become expedient that some noticeable challenges particularly in relation to the engagement and deployment of special constables who are currently being utilized as community policing officers be promptly addressed. Let me talk about the challenges of the, of the community policing in this state. Number one, misuse of social media, that is new media, is creating a lot of big problem in the community. We also have lack of capacity. When I make capacity, both on the side of the police and on the side of the society in promoting this community policing. And lastly, community policing is also entails funding. The town hall engagement, which is forced in the series, was themed community policing, building a safe on Nigeria together. Oba Adeoye, Arise News, Lagos. So joining us now is Honorable Imam Suleiman Ibrahim, Nigeria's Minister of State Affairs for Police Affairs. Great to have you, Minister, this morning. I'd like to ask you, you said that certain amounts need to be earmarked for community policing. 
What is that amount and how did you come about that number? Um, thank you, Rufai, for having me. Thank you, Ayo. So basically, the amount I stated was not just for community policing. It was for us to address our policing challenges. You know that you know, in the past, there's been a bit of neglect. So we have to double up um, efforts to ensure that we strengthen our policing component. And I also, if you remember, I stated that there was going to be a population explosion. So we have gaps. We have policy gaps. We have infrastructural gaps. We have um, capacity building gaps. We have um, even gaps around um, op operational and technical efficiencies. So those funds that I stated based on you know, high level estimates was to be able to address you know, gaps so that we can, we can be able to maintain our policing um, affairs in the country. In where, the right where do you manner. think that money will come from? Because we need, to address, we need to address those, those, those um, concerns you raised. And where do you think the money will come from? From whole of society, I remember a few years ago when the UK needed additional funding for, for, for police and what they did was they charged every household just five pounds extra on their service charge. So we are going to be very, very creative. We'll approach every quarters to be able to augment our, our available resources through, through the budget. All right. Thank you for joining us, Honorable Minister. Now, the concept of community policing especially in the Nigerian context and truly anywhere in the world, has been welcomed because it gives more um, active participation by members of the community and they often have information about crime and you know, criminals living within their community. Now, how will this work in terms of your administration? First of all, perhaps just to dial back as to what challenges, because this isn't the first time it's been posed as a solution to tackling insecurity in our communities. What challenges have you identified since resuming office as having been hampered the kickoff or the success of community policing? And then the second thing is how do you hope to mitigate those challenges to ensure that we can actually have people um, you know, come on board, people more active. The governor of Lagos State in that video was talking about even smartphones or our telephones being a tool when it comes to assisting with intelligence and um, with the concept of community policing. What are the challenges identified? And moving forward, what does this administration hope to do to mitigate those challenges to ensure that it's successful? Um, Ayo, as you may be aware, that as far back as the 70s, we've always had a community policing strategy. We have a new police act, the Police Act of the 2020. And um, what we want to do is to further enable, to strengthen the community policing structures that exist across board. Every community is different. They have their distinctive um, challenges. While some communities may, ex may experience um, a high level of influx of people and they may need to police in that manner, some are agrarian, some are highly commercial. So what we're trying to do with the community policing town hall meetings is to give these communities the permission to go and consult further and come up with their own strategies and then we'll be able to support them. A few of the challenges as highlighted by the acting CP of Lagos is around funding to sustain those community engagements and to also be able to, you know, um, service all the players. And he also spoke about funding of um, um, the challenges around technology. Technology is a threat everywhere. So we also strengthen the cybersecurity component to be able to support, you know, the, the community policing players. And then uh, um, he, he also stated that another challenge is around capacity building both for the police officers and also for the community so that they're aware of the threats and what the indices are and what actually we're after. Um, like I stated, everybody is a police officer, either as an informant, as a watch guard, or as an enforcer. So we all have to live up to our responsibilities. Everybody should take this very seriously. If, you, if, you, if, if you're for Project Nigeria, we have to get policing right for even our renewed hope agenda to work. And we'll do the second question around, so, which is the main part of the question, having identified the challenge, because like you mentioned, truly, in the, from the 70s, however, the reason why you, know, you hold events like this is because it hasn't 
quite maybe perhaps over the years it's been watered down and there have been challenges. So the question now with the new administration, the Renewed Hope Initiative agenda, what would you do differently? How what I because you've mentioned technology, for instance, you talked about capacity building. From the ministry, what are specific steps to be taken to ensure that it's more successful under your administration? Oh yeah, I'm sure you agree that one month of planning equals to almost about two or three years of work. After the last police council, Mr. President inaugurated a committee. Um, he, he set up a committee on police reforms. So first of all, we'd, we're examining all the problems. That's why we're going around to consult. And then we'll come up with strong strategies so that we can be able to trigger the process and lay the right foundation for a strong police reform. Since 1999, there's always been reform papers, almost about eight of them. They've never been implemented. It's because they are, they are cash or they're capital intensive. But if you are aware, Mr. President, during our cabinet retreat, he said that most of what we're doing and most of the changes that are supposed to happen are, 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 you know, would require you know, resources. And he said that since we can't spend our people, we'll find the money to spend. So we're going to be very, very creative and very, very intentional in ensuring that whatever policies we come up with, we actually implement them. Okay. The perpetual bill now is in the National Assembly. Your ministry put in some requests. What was the thinking behind the request you put in? And can you take us through some of the key areas of your, your, your budget? Um, the budget for 2024 aligns with the Renewed Hope Agenda. Every ministry has their own targets. We've signed a bond that has been endorsed by Mr. President. So you find that most of the components around the budget for 2024 for most or for all ministries will align with their, 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 their targets in the Renewed Hope um, Agenda that we have signed. So for example, in the Ministry of Police Affairs, where we work towards, um, we work towards um, the reforms, we work towards um, the private security, strengthening the private security sector so that we can free up our police to be able to focus on their constitutional duties. We work on building capacity around our air police and marine policing and also the mining, the mining policing. We're looking at going green with our policing cars. There's about 18 of them in the ministry, 18 targets. And that's how the budget has been aligned. Okay, so how does that segue now into this ground goal of ensuring that, yes, we get a very good foothold as regards community policing and community engagement? And secondly, what's the justification behind, you know, setting up these police schemes and having this, you know, police, nego uh, this, uh, police community parlays you are having around at this point in time? Um, may I inform you that there's always been a community policing structure across board, but just like um, I think Ayo mentioned that we need to excite them, we need to rejuvenate them, and we need to resuscitate them because some of them have not had meetings for years or they do not have regular meetings. So this, this engagement is just to open up the conversation so that, you know, people know that they have to participate that everybody has a role to play and then they have to go as communities, all the stakeholder blocks to come up with, with, um, with what their requirements are around policing, uh, uh, you know, around community policing, and then what, the, what kind of support they may require from federal government, from the ministry, and from the police force as well. And also highlight the challenges so that we can collectively work towards addressing them. All right. Okay, so, I mean- We started let's... the first one in Lagos. Yes. We're going to go around the country yeah. All right. And I think great yeah, choice. Yes, I, I think um, as the governor said, um, um, Lagos is currently under police. So about uh, about 20,000 police officers in Lagos, which doesn't quite cut um, the need for the number of people living in Lagos. So definitely buying into the community policing idea, um, initiative, and hoping to bolster it in the state. But let's talk about funding again, especially as it relates to where the, you know, where community policing will cushion that. You mentioned at the town hall that we need 3.4 trillion naira over the next five years to bridge the gap or to, the, to reposition the police. 
and you talked about um, private sector investment, you know, just people coming on board to contribute. Let's talk about police funding. The police has been over the years said to be underfunded, hence the reason why we've had to resort to a number of you know, initiatives even involving the military into what's meant to be internal security and they shouldn't really quite have you know, um, any business doing that if the police were well able to do this. How would your ministry better equip or reposition the police despite the fact that you might not have the budget requirement that you need to do that, because like if I mentioned and what you said, you might make requests through the, you know, the budget might be allocated, not, not anywhere near enough. You need to recruit more police officers. The standard of living of police officers and the welfare, not, you know, not up to standard. So how, do we, how would you manage this without having enough funds in the budget to, to provide for this? Okay, so. Um, I've said it again, I'll say it again and again. The police force, the police officers, men and women, have been doing a lot with so little. And at this point, I must commend the political will and prioritization of Mr. President. He said it, that this police reform would happen. And um, we're being creative. We've proposed a structure that would serve as a buffer for the existing funding around policing. And we're engaging, we're, we're coming up with them very, we're having to see very positive outcomes. People want to support policing because people understand and they recognize the fact that once policing work, half of the... So yes, some of the things I can't disclose now until they arrive, but yes, we're, we're, we're being very, very creative and intentional. Okay, let's talk about the role of local content in your procurement and this is your grand dream for the police. Hope in those green cars you put in the budget, you will be buying them locally from local auto manufacturers, because that's a very big one. Will that be the case? And also, in the budget, there's a provision for some money to be spent on like a cybersecurity force, you know, by the army component, you know, by the military component. What is the synergy between your community policing outlook and that cybersecurity force, you know, to be able to stem the tide of challenges on social media, spread of fake news and things like that. Um, firstly, we all know that, uh, you know, there's, there's challenges around synergy. We're working on strengthening and perfecting it so that we can have better outcomes. And also, with regards to local content, for as long as we can find the local, you know, um, local source would would support otherwise we're working on ensuring that because the nigerian police is one of the biggest establishments in nigeria is the biggest police force in africa one of the biggest in the world so we must begin to think inwardly we would like to be able to you know build capacity of our industries our factories so that we can support our growing police force so for now whatever we can source from nigeria would support otherwise we will we in place the framework so that we can be able to service our police force without um, importing. All right. Thank you so much, Minister. Wish you a lot of luck and we'll track your progress. And like they say, go break a leg. <laughs> break it fast. All right. Have a good one. Have a good morning.